Once again, welcome back. Uh, before we get on with our stir frying display, and we're going to um, make beef and broccoli, stir fry beef and broccoli, I just wanted to demonstrate the display that uh, I have here and its importance. I have things arranged here on a, on a little um, carousel, and you can have that or not, but, but the important thing is to have your ingredients that you're going to be using your stir fry easily at hand so you don't waste time because the stir frying process is a quick process. So uh, you'll see here I have set up, I have, uh, this is uh, chopped garlic and ginger, about a three to one ratio, like three parts garlic to one part ginger, minced up and if you uh, suspend it in oil, you can keep that for weeks and weeks in your refrigerator. So, and then on the sauce side I have set up here, I have sesame oil, and this is oyster sauce here, Kiko Min Thin Soy Sauce, and this is the coloring agent, the thick soy sauce. And in the background you see I have the uh, hoisin sauce, which is already in a squeeze bottle, which we won't be using for the uh, uh, beef and broccoli. And here is I just have some uh, ground pepper, black pepper. So one thing you also notice on the squeeze bottles is depending on the uh, consistency of the seasoning, if it's, if it's thin like water, I don't cut the tip at all. Just snip it very close to the end. If it's a thicker ingredient like the thick soy sauce or the oyster sauce, you can use a pair of kitchen shears or a knife and cut the tip so, so the opening is wider so it's easier to dispense. But the, the important thing I wanted to show everyone is that you need to have these seasonings set up close to your wok. So when you have the oil hot and you can just put in your, your minced garlic your vet, your broccoli, stir fry it, or the beef, whichever. But the uh, the important thing is to have the the ingredients close at hand. Here also, you see, I use these uh, uh, little plastic red uh, drink cups for a lot of things because they're easy to mix with. You know, it's 16 ounce cups, so you know you, if you fill it to the top, you have two cups. Halfway is about one cup. So in this uh, particular cup, I have these uh, the cornstarch suspension, which is I, I made with about four heaping tablespoons of cornstarch and then maybe a quarter quarter cup of water and you mix it up and this will be used to thicken the sauce for the for the beef and broccoli. So we'll take a short break and then we're going to start start with the stir frying. Okay now as you can see we're getting ready the fun begins. You can use any type of instrument like I just use a regular pancake turner. You can get the, the, the small, uh, what the Oriental, the Chinese call wok chan. That would be an, an instrument like this. And then there's a ladle part for your left hand. But for simple stir frying in the house, this is fine. And as you can see, this wok is getting hot. You can see the white spot here and the smoke is coming off. So this wok is ready to go. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna put some oil from, and I keep my oil in this container over here. I use the, pancake turner to put in maybe two, two tablespoons and I swirl it around. Now you remember we marinated the, the beef in those and put it in the individual bags. Here's one of these bags and as I was telling you, you carefully slide it down the side of your wok. And as you can see, it's going. Break it up and stir fry it around. If it looks a little dry, you can always touch it up with just a little more oil. And as I explained before, once you get that oil, that wok white hot, you put the oil in there and then you put your beef. You can see it's not sticking to the wok. And this wok is four or five years old. So the, the woks that I'm including in my cooking set are commercial grade and they'll last just as long as this wok, which is about at least five years old. When all the pink is gone from the, from the beef, you'll notice that it has that smooth texture. To keep it smooth, I now take it out and put it in my serving dish. 
Part two, you add just a little more oil. Wok is still hot. I've got my minced garlic and ginger. I place that in the wok. About a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half. You can hear it sizzling. Stir fry it around. You don't want it to be dark. You just want it to be to the, the aroma, the flavor to come out. Then you, this is um, broccoli and the carrot mixture that we cut up before. Put that in your wok. What I did was I steamed that uh, broccoli and carrot mixture in the microwave for three minutes on high with a quarter cup of water in the bottom of, of this uh, covered casserole. When it's done, that, that's like pre-cooked your broccoli. You can drain that water out into one of these white cups and then you have the hot water necessary to make your sauce. Or you can use unsalted chicken broth also. Okay, I'm going to stir this up. In Chinese restaurants, commercial restaurants, they have a process called pow wok where they actually take the wok and you can, you can toss it up in the air. It's like, you know, but they have a lot higher heat source. Now we're going to add If the water is hot, it's not going to take that long for it to return to boiling. But as that water is returning to boiling, that's when you're going to add your sauce in. Okay, just a touch of sesame oil, oyster sauce. I would say that's about two and a half tablespoons. And you have to remember that all these sauces are salty. The kikumin soy sauce, which is not as salty as the, the authentic uh, Chinese soy sauce but I prefer kikamun just for that fact it's not real salty. And then for the color, we add a little bit of the uh, thick, thick soy sauce to give it that, that nice brown color. I have salt here. Remember, keeping in mind that all those sauces had salt, you don't need to add that much salt. So maybe between a half to a teaspoon of salt. And I have to keep my black pepper in this. You just need a touch of black pepper. And that's it. Now, you can see that this is already, this mixture is, is already boiling. So the only thing left for me to do is to add the cornstarch. And when it get, and when it thickens up, I return the beef back into the wok and, and stir fry. So you gradually add this mixture back, the cornstarch mixture. You can add a little bit at a time, and you can see when it, when it thickens up, when it gets to the right consistency. That looks good right there. So we just now we just add our beef back in. You stir fry it. At this point, if you, if you want to adjust anything, you can you can kind of take a, a taste of it. If it's all when you're adding the seasonings, it's always good to add a little bit of salt at first, and then taste it. If it, if it you know, and different people have different preferences for their salt. So I would like to have a richer color to it, so I'll, I'll touch it up with a little bit more of the thick soy sauce. Stir fry a little bit more and it's ready to go on the plate to serve. There you have it. Beef and broccoli. Authentic Chinese stir fry. And that was one bag of the prepared beef. And this is the result. There again, that, that is a very attractive dish. The, the carrots give it color. Uh, the beef is tender and smooth and that should serve uh, four people easily. So, this concludes the lesson on the stir-fry.